Welcome to the 2006 PartyPoker.com World 10-Pin Masters. There are just four players remaining in this tournament and we'll have all the semi-final action for you as those bowlers battle it out to see who can take the prestigious title and the winner's cheque for $30,000. The first semi-final will be underway very shortly as the players take to the Masters stage. But while defending champion Jens Nickel of Germany and his opponent Paul Moore of England go through their final preparations for the big match, that gives us some time to look at how they got to the semi-finals. The defending champion was given a scare in round one. England's young sensation Dominic Barrett made Jens Nickel work for his win, but in the end it was the German who came through. Paul Moore renewed his love affair with the Masters by overcoming Lisa Del Rosario in round one. Moore got locked into the lane and started what was to be another great run at this event. The defending champion resisted a determined fight back from Guy Kaminsky. Nerves of steel and a bit of luck allowed Nickel to see off the spirited South African and book his place in the next round. Moore's quarter-final victory over Dutch bowler Wim van der Veen could have been a tall order, but in the land of the left-handers it was Moore who was king, booking his place in the semi-final once again. Welcome to the 2006 PartyPoker.com World 10 Pin Masters. It's semi-final time and in this first semi-final it's a rematch and for one of the bowlers it could be revenge time as the two finalists from 2005 renew their Masters rivalry. Time then to introduce you to the players. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome the defending Masters champion from Germany, Jens Nickel! <laughs> Jens, welcome to the stage. Congratulations on getting through to the semi-final. Uh, you must have some interesting memories about the match that you had in the final with Paul Moore last year. Oh, it was fantastic. To beating Paul in the final, an English guy in front of this audience, it's fantastic. And the crowd was part of my success. Unbelievable. Well, the crowd definitely on your side, but you've also got another supporter that travels with you. Yeah, my girlfriend, Britta. He's here. She's here. <laughs> Thank you. And she brothers, she brothers my, uh, her sons for me. It's okay. Crosses her fingers for you, yeah? Good stuff. Now then, how are you feeling ahead of this match? Oh, I feel so far great, but uh, my girlfriend said um, I've got only one problem. 
I'm unshaved. I forgot my shaver. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry for that. Go on, Jens. We'll let you off. Ladies and gentlemen, from Germany, Jens Nickel. Now, Jens' opponent was so close in 2005, but it just wasn't to be. However, he's now got his chance for revenge. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome, from England, Paul Moore! Paul, welcome to the stage. Congratulations once again on getting to this stage of the Masters. What are your memories of that final last year? Well, it wasn't great by my, uh, by my standards, really. Um, the first match was really close. Um, I could have uh, got into a bigger lead than what I hoped for. I had a bit of bad luck in the 10th, 7-10. And second game, again, has just killed me. Front, front eight, I think, front nine. So I had no chance. But, yeah, it was. Uh, this time it's... It's payback time, I think. <laughs> now, Paul, I've noticed at this tournament that you tend to see the bigger picture. You're going around talking with all the other bowlers. Is this a good experience for you? Yeah, I mean, it's. Um, I just try and. I don't try and get overawed with it. I just try and get the same person I was. I'm really just talk to anyone and, and whoever. If you know, so I don't. I don't try and get um, too. I don't know, really. Too excited. I'll second that. You, you're so laid back. It's, it's incredible. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we wish him the best of luck. Paul Moore from England. Time then to get this first semi-final underway and to hand you over to your match referee Bernie White and your commentators for this game, Cass Edwards and Nick Halling. Up, shake hands, gentlemen. Wish you good luck with bowling. <laughs> Jens to bowl first. Match referee Bernie White concludes the formalities. And we're at, uh, his seat's been taken, but Bernie can't even uh, find a seat here. It's that crowded. And it is time for business. Jens Nickel will lead off. Just making an adjustment to his grip there before he's bowled a ball in anger. England v Germany. Defending champion against beaten finalist, left-hander v right-hander. And the format, the same as usual, it's a two-game sprint. Highest aggregate at the end of two games will be in the final. Nice hook. Got some terrific reaction from the ball. And into the pocket, and uh, Jens opens up with a strike. Yes, all that practice was worthwhile, wasn't it? Great reaction in the back end of the lane there, in the last uh, 15 feet. That's where all the high scores come from, and uh, Jens ripped the 1-3 pocket, which is a sweet spot for the right-hander. Carried all 10 pins away. Look at Jens's face, not smiling at the moment, taking this very seriously indeed. Keeping everything under control. It's not just about the prize money, that's big, and it means a lot, but they want that title too. And strike for strike, Paul Moore has come back out as well. Well, so with the scores all level, <laughs> Paul Moore rips, uh, rips the rack. Shows us his uh, fine style as well. You get the feeling this is going to be a real cat and mouse game. I don't see anybody going off on a tear up on this one and leaving the other guy in the dust. They're both bowling very well indeed. Jens a 4.53 in his first round match, 4.36 in his quarter final. And Paul, wow, terrific, topped 5.18 in his last match. Jens out of the pocket badly. Yes, very badly out of the pocket, high through the head pin. Probably just inside his mark. Got a huge reaction in the back end. Let's just have a look at this. Yeah, as soon as he put the ball down, it's inside his mark. Just hasn't made the, the pocket at all. 3-6-10 with a 4-pin and a 7-pin. 
Now this is a makeable spirit. It's a low count. It's only five on his first shot, but uh, if he can clip that uh, three pin on the right-hand side, bounce it across as a measure, he could make this spare. Right. Not the easiest shot in the world. Yeah, there's enough pins up, as you say, Cass, to get some pin action going. But he couldn't kick uh, anything over to that left-hand side and uh, open frame for the defending champion. Nick, as you normally say, uh, get him out of the way early and then regroup. Well, it's frame two. Let's hope it's early enough out of the way. And the other cliche is when your opponent has an open frame, if you want to win the match, you better jump in with a strike. So Jens has left the door open. It's up to Paul Moore now to grab the key and walk through it. Just like that. Nice double to open up with from the Yorkshireman. Welcome back to the first semi-final in the World Ten Pin Masters. England's Paul Moore against Jens Nickel. Moore has made the more impressive start with three strikes in the opening three frames. We join the action at the start of frame four. Commentary from Cass Edwards and Nick Halling. So far, he's made a good start. But Jens, if he gets back on track, is not out of touch. But Jens knows the last two first balls have been pretty shocking. That's even worse. And that's another six count, so it's, uh, he's losing pins on his bonus balls here. And this one's flirted with the channel, it's just sailed away. It's just cool in the condition on the outside of that lane and it's just held it wide. Jason Belmonte and Thomas Lee Anderson having words about that shot. And both uh, Jens's victims are in the uh, crowd as well. Dominic Barrett and Guy Kaminsky, they're looking on, no doubt. Uh, Perhaps hoping that Paul can uh, get some revenge for them as well, but it's uh, it's not about Paul Moore at the moment. It's about Jens Nickel and the fact that his game is right off the boil. Missed the head pin. He's got to do some hard work here just to uh, clean it up. And he does. Well, he's digging out some good spares, but the spares are no good to him at all. I mean, this is this is a shocking start from the champ. Fortunate once again to make the spare. Seems to be a man under pressure just at the moment. He's now look. He's having a look at the pins. He's having a look at the lane. He's just going through his imaginary next uh, lineup. Yes, we've seen this before from Jens in his uh, quarterfinal against Guy Kaminsky. He spent some time just looking down the lane while his opponent was up. But of course, he can't see anything that Paul Moore is doing with his ball because Paul's bowling from the left side. Paul's a left hander. There's nothing that he can get from what Moore's doing. And a four bagger from Paul Moore. And. Uh, Jens is in a deep hole here, and it's uh, Moore that's shoving the dirt on him at the moment. Yeah, this is almost beat-up time, isn't it? Four strikes in a row from Paul. Well, it's just a fraction light, but uh, far a bit for me to be critical. Four strikes in a row. Great start from the young man. Yeah, it really is, and Paul's parents are in the crowd. Pat and John, they'll be looking on and knowing that so far, so good for their son. But Jens, very capable, but the last three balls that Jens has bowled have been all terrible. Let's see if he can get in the pocket. That's a bit more like it. Oh, thank goodness for that. Yeah, slight adjustment there on the Jens' setup. Just shaded to the left on the approach, gave himself a, a bit more room to open his lane up and got the great reaction in the back end and carried all ten. That's more like the Jens nickel we know. And he still looks a little bit happier, doesn't he? Well, he's a long way adrift. The deficit, if Paul strikes here, is already 58. That can't get any wider. Well, Cass was a bit uh, split hairs on his last one. He said it was a little bit light. Let's see if he's perfect on this one. Well, no. Doesn't take the uh, the eight, I believe that is, at the back there, Cass? <clears throat> yeah, well, in fact, it was over perfect. It was too much hook in the back end and just went right behind the uh, head pin into the one two pocket. Drove straight through the five pin and did deflect onto that uh, eight pin. Just too much hook in the back end and it's le left him that single pin, which uh, will bring out his blue spare ball. This should go a lot straighter, harder surface ball. Shouldn't be too much trouble to spare it. And it isn't, but no perfect game for Paul Moore. He has a healthy lead. And the question is, 
can Jens find his A game and make this a little bit more of a match Paul Moore at the moment cruising along comfortably in his quest for revenge if this is the first time you've seen Jens Nickel you're wondering why we keep talking about him as the smiling assassin that's one of his nicknames he hasn't had anything to smile about at all in this match I suspect if he doubles here there might be a a little bit of lightning of his mood and that looks a lot better but the 10 hasn't done him any favors and he was a bit unlucky there yeah nice solid hit solid hit in the pocket this caused the uh, six pin to jump right around that uh, 10 pin and lay flat It was a nice looking shot and that's two he's lined up in the pocket. Now he's got the tricky 10 pin spare right over on the right hand side. Jens brings out his spare ball. He's to straighten this shot out. And as we always say these single pins in the corner once in a while they get away from people but Jens has made absolutely certain that. Thank goodness for Jens's uh, game that his spare ball has been pretty effective in this match. Yes, he's had um, three low counts in his first shot, but just one open frame, so he's um, he's hanging in there. Not a typical Jens uh, nickel bowling card score sheet. Well, Jens would have gone into this thinking, I'm probably the underdog here because both his two first round scores were lower than uh, Paul's lowest. So of the two, Paul is the man in form. Can he get back on strike? Yes, he can. Delight for Pat and John, his parents. A bit like the sun, really. They uh, they don't favour the spotlight. They'll just find themselves a place in the crowd and keep out of everybody's way. But we've tracked them down. Yeah, we find everybody. Absolutely. Zoom in on them. Put them on TV. 57 pins the lead after six frames for Paul Moore. Jens knows if that gets any wider, it's probably game up. He's just got to try and find... Well, he's got to f strike off the sheet, at least in this first game, and uh, hope that he's within touching distance at the turnaround. Now, Jens has had two looks uh, at that rack of pins down the other end, 60 feet away, and he's decided to take a re-rack, which he's perfectly entitled to do. He just checked with uh, Bernie White. He obviously thought one of the pins was not quite uh, making the triangle. He's taken the re rack from the uh, pin spotter, those uh, 10 twister pins. Should now be on spots, and uh, Jens can uh, take his first ball in the seventh frame. Working on a spare. He really needs a strike. Get it with that. He's very fortunate that that seven went, and uh, I think uh, there's some anxious looks in the uh, Jens Nickel camp right now because this is uh, not going according to the script. Yes, Gaff and Brissa didn't uh, didn't like that one very much. No, I'm sure Jens didn't either. Bit of overreaction in the back end. He's got that three six and the ten yet again. There's two ways he can go about this. He can hit the uh, three pin on the left hand side. Or on the right hand side with the ball and let the ball run down and take the tempin away. It needs to be reasonably reasonably accurate whichever way he's gonna go. Yeah, again, a good spare, but spares are no good. Jens has two strikes. Paul has five, and he put four of them together as well, and that's how you max that's how you get the big scores. You max out some of those strikes. And the uh, the calculator starts whirring, but Jens is not getting strikes. And he's not sitting down in his seat, is he? He's uh, standing up there, um, contemplating the approach and the lane for his next shot. Mentally going through uh, his uh, setup process. Meanwhile, Paul Moore, under no pressure at the moment, but he wants to twist the knife. Well, that's looking pretty good, isn't it? A double for Paul after that early four-bagger. Yes, uh, the knife well twisted. In fact, apart from that hard eight that he left, which, as you said, it was almost too good a shot, that's the only pin he's left, Paul, so far. He's that close to perfection. Yeah, he's pacing 279. If he goes off the sheet with strikes, and he is looking pretty good. 
This is a great score sheet. I don't know many bowlers that won except that. Well, yes. Yeah, it's, it's real simple now. You better start finding some strikes. You need six, seven, eight, nine strikes in a row to get yourself back into this match. Let's take them one at a time. No, I'm not going to get it with that, and it's it's really looking bleak for him now. Low pin count on a spare, another split. It's a makeable split, but it, it's it's just hard to see where Jens can go from here. <laughs> Nick, I'd like to see you try and make that one. Oh, I, by his standards, <laughs> it's makeable. It's the big five. <laughs> dear, oh dear. Let's um, presume he's going to have an open frame here. This is a 500 to 1 shot, this one. Ye of little faith. I've seen it made a couple of times. Not that often. As you say, it's a low pin count and very likely to be an open frame. It's frame number 8. And uh, Jens is looking at uh, a sub 150 here if he's not not careful. Oh. <clears throat> Gave it the try and unfortunately just took the one, so it's uh, even lower than before. Just not looking good. Looking to bounce that single pin across. Looking for some action and uh, chain reaction. Not getting it. Well, I believed in you, Jens, even though nobody else did. Fat lot of good it's done him. <laughs> He can max out at 180 if he finds four strikes. So far, he's managed two. Yeah. And I don't know how he's coming back from this cast. And Paul Moore just keeps rolling along. Is it another? There it is, in there like swimwear. Uh, Paul is trying to wrap this match up uh, in the first game. He's trying to get so far ahead that Jens has got no comeback at all. And unfortunately, it looks as though it could go that way. Jens needs four strikes for... 180 and Paul is again back in the pocket and on that 279 pace. Well, in the eight previous years of this tournament, there has never been a successful defense of the title. And uh, barring something extraordinary, it's not going to happen this year either. Jens Nichols' reign is coming to an end right here. Now the head pin's left, and it's yeah. Jens knows this is this is this is finished. Uh, there's nowhere he can go now. He's certainly looking confused, isn't he? He's not getting any sort of reaction now. Um, a couple of lines that he's thrown. Look at that. As soon as the ball's off his hand, it's gone. It's not even looking at it. It's just gone. It's got caught up in the lane conditioner. Missed the head pin on the right hand side for six. Well, does he get this spare? You were right last time. Can he make this one? Well, he can certainly make this one, yeah. But uh, unfortunately, so far behind, and with only, what, 10, 11 frames to go now, you could al almost get into the mental mode of giving the whole match up. Ball is so far ahead. Uh, great shot from the cameraman there, showing the spare. But at the turn, it looks like he's going to be in excess of 100 pins adrift, and you're not getting that back against Paul Moore. Ducks in a row, they went down. But it's yet another spare for Jens Nickel. Nine frames, two strikes, two open frames, and a bunch of spares. Yeah, he really has uh, come to the party with uh, without his A game, without his strike ball, I'm afraid. Whereas this uh, Paul has uh, bought anything but his strike ball. Another four bagger through the ninth frame, the foundation frame, sips himself up for. Uh, tenth frame, three strikes in a row, 279 will be a fantastic game. And it will be high game of the tournament. Just glancing down at the uh, TV monitor with the scores that's on the side of the stage. Yeah, when he sees those stats, he'll think, yeah, I'm doing all right so far, aren't I? But uh, this job isn't over yet. It looks like he's got Jens exactly where he wants him, a pair of four baggers for more. And Jens is just uh, trying to find something. He's in the pocket and he's finally got himself a strike in the 10th. <laughs> OK, he's, he's now lined up and he's away. He's ready for the match. Let's, I mean, get, let's get going now. He's like, I'm coming after you, Paul. Wagging his finger at him there. So here you go. You're in trouble now, son. Yeah, he liked that shot and there was a bit of body language and... Uh, got the crowd on his side, but... Uh, 
it's a desperate times just at the moment for Jens Nickel. Yeah, I don't think Paul is exactly sat in his chair, quaking in his bowling shoes. But strange things do happen in this game, but it would... Uh, the lane would have to break down badly in the second game for Paul Moore to stumble here, surely. The, the question is, how big is the lead? Jens can uh, find another one. No, that's unfortunate. That, that ruins any momentum he might have carried. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Tempin in the corner. We're giving the spare for 160. Not a bad shot. He's just made a slight variation in his setup there. A couple of boards left with his feet. Just uh, trying to open the lane a little bit more. Give himself a bigger area to get that ball into. But having said that, we have seen uh, Jens bowl big high games before. If he does, decides to go on one of those uh, bowling sprees, there's no reason why he's not going to hit maybe 250, 260 second game. We'll just have to wait and see. It's almost a wave of the crowd as if to say, thanks a lot and I'm sorry I've let you down. 160. Yeah, he's counting that up and saying, is that it? 160? Mm, not quite his league average, I'm sure. He's going to console himself with a drink of water. Probably wishes there was a drop of something harder in there right now. You never know. There could well be. So Paul with a chance just to pad the lead a little more. Yep. Yeah. He's off with a strike. A five bagger now. Where's well, it all going to end for Paul Moore? This has been quite a demonstration. Yes, he's uh, sending out a message as well, isn't he? Not only is he saying, Jens, have a look, see what I can do, but also whoever he may be playing in the final, assuming that he's going to get that far. Well, Cass, you always like to um, have a little bit of a laugh when you call the left-handers lucky. <laughs> I think even you might uh, hesitate to be call calling Paul Moore a lucky man at the moment. He oh, is bowling beautifully. No, 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 definitely not. This has been an absolutely classic game, and it's so close to being a 300 game. Had he put that one in the pocket, but uh, unfortunately he lost it. But uh, I'm sure he's not going to worry. He will carry a a plus 100 lead into the second leg. Yeah, he's going to be 260 plus. Not a bad opener. Good for your confidence. Gives you something to work with in uh, in game number two if uh, that's the way you're thinking. What a great game. 265 and mum and dad look very pleased. As well they might. Paul Moore has been waiting 12 months. That was almost a, a handshake of admission right there from Jens Nickel, because surely there is no way back for the German now. Paul Moore at the halfway point of his big revenge match. Good by 105 pins. Revenge is looking sweet. <laughs> Just before we get back to the action, Chris Barnes gives us a guide on how to get it right when it comes to finding the pocket and finding those strikes. You'll often hear the term pocket, and the pocket means for a left hander will be the head pin, which is on the 20th board, and the two pin, which is the pin immediately left of that, which is on the 15th board. The ideal place to hit the pocket is on the 17th and a half board where your strike percentage is nearly 100%. For a right-hander, the pocket is the head pin, and the pin directly right of that, which is the three pin. It is also on the 17th and a half board, where 100% strikes can be had. Anything light of that, say the 16th board, will likely result in a 10 pin or for a right-hander, or a seven pin for a left-hander. Anything high around the 19th board will likely result in a four pin or a six pin for a left-hander. Anything higher than that, and you'll see some of these disastrous splits that can ruin a game. Nice pocket shot. Nice nine pin. Not too much wrong with this. Nice smooth style. Very still head. His eyes burning through that through that lane. And the ball's burned through the one-two pocket and left that nine pin standing. A straightforward spare, dare I say.
Well, not straightforward, but he did just enough. There's uh, Jason Belmonte to the left, Thomas Leanderson to the right. Of course, that's a death row of bowlers, isn't it? There's a few more uh, vanquished bowlers around them as well. Yeah, I wouldn't like to say that that's the loser's bracket, but they all are all losers at the moment in this year's competition. And just hiding behind Thomas is uh, Dominic Parra there. We can't quite see him. He was Jens Nichols' first round victim. Yeah, Jason just uh, playing to the fans. Jens working on a spare. I'm not going to get his strike ball going. Oh, he's again a bit light on the head pin. He almost left himself the sleeper again, but... Uh, just yes, I think um, Jens is um, playing out to lunch today, I'm afraid. He'll be eating out on this one. Look at that. As soon as it's gone, he knows the ball's wayward. Gets on the outside of that lane, flirts with the channel, and it's never going to come back. I think when he gets the DVD of this match, he's going to throw it straight in the bin. That's a brave man who's going to stick it in the mail to him. This gets stopped at customs for being X-rated. Nice spare. Two in a row. Unfortunately, not enough. Well, <laughs> just checking that your sponsor's name's showing. <laughs> listen, listen, when your sponsor's names are starting to fall off your shirt, you, you know you're in real trouble. You know it is not your day. I'm not sure whether the sponsors want to see this game. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, nothing to do with us. Paul is working on a spare second frame. Just going to keep the ball in play. Not doing anything silly. Looking for another 10. Ooh, rips the rack and leaves that seven pin standing right in the corner there. Well, just an acute angle going in behind that uh, one two pin. Well, wait a second here, Cass. For a guy that couldn't miss in the first game. Paul Moore's come up three times and has yet to find a strike. Do you uh, detect uh, some deterioration in his game? Is the lane condition changing for him? Is he just, has he just got a mentally switched off? What's going on? I think he's just getting into cruise control, honestly. <clears throat> Taking his time, he's very relaxed. He's over 100 pins ahead. There's nothing to panic about. And if he's not going to carry all 10, and if, as long as he can make spares, he'll be fine. Only just made that one. That was a little bit of a, a narrow squeak, but yeah. Pressure? Nah. He's still uh, on course for a second consecutive 500-plus game. He's going to have to step it up a bit if he does want to crack the 500. No, I'm sure that's not part of his game. It scores doesn't matter. It's just winning the games and uh, progressing to the final. That's what he's looking for. strike from the German. How many is that now? Four. Through 13 frames, can you believe we're talking about four strikes through 13 frames for Jens? Yeah, Nick, you're spot on. That's all it is. It's a nice shot, good reaction in the back end, and uh, makes you wonder why he's not had the reaction earlier on. He's been uh, left-hand side of the head pin as such, uh, right-hand side, missing it on the right-hand side. But that one was flush. That was a good shot. Well, Jens is discovering what so many other winners of this event have discovered before him. Scaling the summit of this particular tournament is one thing. Staying on the summit has so far proved impossible. Yes, and when he come up against punters like Paul Moore in the uh, form that he's in, you can see why. Back on that strike line again. Just opens up the shot a little bit more. His feet to the right on the approach just gave him a little bit more area and utilised it 100%. Oh, I thought Jens was praying. I thought he was on his knees for a moment there. I thought, well, I knew it was bad, Jens, but uh, I don't think anything can help you now. No, he's just taken his uh, second re of the match. He's obviously... Uh, Seen something not quite on spot again, and he's perfectly entitled to uh, ask the referee for that re rack and take it. Again, he's having another look just to make sure. Oh, a few words of advice there as well. I 
Adam's eyes burning through the lane. Working on a strike, looking for the double. Oh, it's having a wobble, but uh, no, nothing's going for Jens. It's, uh, it's been a horrible semi-final for him, and uh, you can hear a pin drop in this auditorium. There is so much sympathy for this extremely popular big man from Bremen. Yeah, it looks like he's worn out his track here. I'm afraid he's, uh, if he's outside, he's not making the pocket. If he's inside, he's uh, overreacting in the back end. Fortunate just to leave the single pin, but uh, that's no good to him. He needs to string some strikes together. And big time. Well, Britta has seen enough of Jens' action to know that uh, the jig is up here. It's uh, no happy return to West Yorkshire for Jens Nickel. He's going down, and he's going down big time. And uh, as much as he struggled, we have to say that one of the reasons for his demise here in the semi-final is that Paul Moore was so red-hot in that first game. He came out and made his statement early and said, Jens, I've waited 12 months for this. It's your turn to be on the wrong end of things this time. And uh, since that early burn-up from Paul Moore, this one has never been in doubt. Yeah, and as I mentioned, he's also sending out a message to our other two semi-finalists and saying, look, I'm here. This is what you're going to have to beat. If you get me in the final. Another great shot, right in the one-two pocket, rips the rack and carries all ten for another double. He's going to allow himself a smile in a minute. Maybe not, <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> oh, come on, Paul, you let me down. No, he's well focused, yeah, well focused. He'll in. smile at the end of this, though. He'll be a very happy man, and whether that makes him smile or not, I'm not sure. Jens will be smiling soon. It'll be the, the smile of resignation. This fella loves his bowling. Yes, he takes it seriously, but he's always struck me as one of these fellas that when something good happens, he doesn't get too carried away. And if it's a disaster for him, he doesn't get himself into any pit of despair. He's just a fairly steady guy emotionally. Well, <laughs> he's going to accept that strike. He's right flush with the nose, <laughs> as we say, right through the head pin. And he's carried all ten. But going back to what you're saying, Nick, yes, win, lose or draw, Jens will thank the crowd for being on his side, which they are. And he will retire gracefully. Hello. We're yes. going to walk about. Oh, that's interesting. It's not often the uh, bowlers the have a word with... Whereabouts? He's just asking Bernie. He seems to think there may be something on the lane apart from the lane conditioner. It is very rare that our match referee is, is called into uh, action during a match. Well, maybe the camera can zoom down there and see what Bernie's found. No, that's not it. No. That's... Any loose nuts and bolts? It's a mark. That's uh, ingrained into it's the, uh, into the uh, synthetic lane. Oh, bit of, maybe it's just a bit of gamesmanship from Jens. Well, a bit late for that, Jens, if it's gamesmanship. <laughs> You're under pins adrift with five to go. And it's on the left-hand side of the lane, and he's, he's marked oh. on the right-hand side. So what's going on? Crikey, you and I beat Jens from here. Well, you speak for yourself. <laughs> so after that little uh, unscheduled... Uh, Appearance from our match referee. Back to business with a strike from Paul North. Three no. in a row. It hasn't put Paul, Paul off, has it? Three and strikes in a row. He might not be smiling. But Mum and Dad are. Yeah, of course, without a doubt. It's a bit like watching uh, Tim Henman at Wimbledon, this, isn't it? You know, that's. Tim Henman's always got mum and dad watching him. Paul Moore will be hoping he's not the Tim Henman of uh, this tournament. He'll want to go one better, or two better rather, and uh, not only get to the final, but win it. And Jens will be cheered to the rafters for his first double of this semi-final. Well, let's just say that we, uh, we do get our scouts out of this uh, commentary box. I I've been told that Jens Nichols' ball is... Uh, Got a slight crack between the two finger holes. 
and that will be making a vast difference to the uh, feel in the ball that he has and it may be that part of the uh, surface of the ball has actually come off and that could have been what was laying on the lane um, and I'm just going to have to check that while Paul steps up looking for another strike and without further ado makes it four in a row the proud parents delighted that that four bagger effectively uh, means that Paul can just uh, go through the motions now he can experiment he can uh, check something different that is a winning tally whatever happens from here Jens comes up and uh, worth making the point that uh, Jens is scheduled for knee surgery as soon as this competition is over I don't think he for one second would make the knee an excuse for what's happened here the semi-final but uh, we certainly wish him well with that and uh, hope he's back to full action soon well I didn't see much wrong with that and uh, it's given Jens uh, three strikes in a row so he's uh, maybe he's back on his A game but uh, it's a bit too late I'm afraid Ooh, those pins were uh, bouncing around there. Uh, Jens put a little bit of extra mustard on that one. Yeah, those twisters are sometimes jokers as well. Jumping all around the deck. Frame eight. Well, another strike. Who would, if you were in Paul Moore's shoes, who would you fancy? Would you fancy bowling a fellow lefty, Alex Liu, in the final? Or would you want another right hander, Chris Barnes? Because uh, that's what he's got to face. If you were Paul, who would you want? Oh, now you're asking me, aren't you? Because <laughs> it's not going to be easy, whichever way is it. It's, uh, there's no such thing as an easy final, but I wonder if he'd want a fellow lefty or if he'd want to just take on another righty. I think he'd probably want to take on the right-hander out of the two. So that at least he's going to be staying uh, in his own area. He's not going to have anybody playing on his side of the lane. Ian's uh, almost says goodnight now with that one in the eighth frame. It's the big four. Uh, four, six, seven, ten. Doesn't seem to be uh, any adverse effect, uh, if that's correct. What I was told about his uh, ball cracking up certainly doesn't show there. But uh, this is likely to be an open frame as well, I'm afraid. Surely, if Jens's ball was cracking up, he'd change it. Oh, and how's that? Three out of four. That wasn't bad, was it? Nice try. It can be made, but you need a little bit of luck. And this is the way to do it. Let's chip that six pin across and hope you get the knock from oh, one to the other. That's how close so it is. So close. Very unfortunate. Well, that sums up his uh, semi-final. He's not had the breaks today, Jens. But he'll take it philosophically. Not his day. Massive difference between those two, isn't there? Quite horrendous. Well, Paul, just on form, would have come into this uh, semi-final as the slight favourite. But I don't think anybody quite expected the uh, the struggles that Jens Lehmann has had. England's revenge. I've oh, got me funny hat on. Kiss me quick. This is six in a row from Paul Moore. Nice six pack. And that was the foundation frame, so uh, frame ten awaits. Well, the maximum score in the competition is 518. He's on course with a double to set the bar even higher. Yeah, he won't be worried about that. I mean, he, he knows what he's up to and uh, he knows he's won this match, so uh, he'll be more than satisfied with that, no matter what he bowls in his last frame. Hello. Jens just letting everybody know that he knows how to strike, or has remembered how to strike. Yeah, back in the air and he got a good reaction that time. Kept well online. Carried all ten pins from the one three pocket hit. But it's the last frame of this semi final for Paul Moore. He can relax and start smiling in just a couple of moments because he's through to a second successive partypoker.com world ten pin masters. That's no mean achievement. Yeah, mum and dad looking on there as Paul uh, rips the rack yet again. Earns himself two bonus balls in the tenth frame and uh, strike out for 268, which beat 260, would, would beat 265 his first game. Just wait. Up. 
I'm not sure what the delay is here. The pins have been... Uh, he hasn't got... Uh, the ball hasn't returned. Oh, I, think, all right. I think someone stole his ball from him in there. <laughs> well, that's the only thing that's going to stop him, isn't it? Could have been Chris Barnes, perhaps. <laughs> now the ball's back now, and uh, he's here for his... Uh, bonus ball in the 10th frame. Yeah, he is signing off in some style. Eight in a row for Paul Moore, and... Uh, his fellow bowlers, no longer involved in the competition, can only stand back and admire and applaud. So, Paul Moore into the final after a very impressive win over defending champion Jens Nickel. But who will he face? Chris Barnes and Alex Liu are waiting in the wings. That'll be our next match from the World Ten Pin Masters of 2006.